YouTube. My, my name is Trey. Welcome to What Can I Change? Man, this video is wild, and I, I don't even have a proper introduction for it. Y'all are gonna be like, what? There's no way. Let's hop right into it. Let's not waste any time. Let's, let's watch. Do y'all see that? What about you? Do you ever play with your penis? That little boy's got to be six or seven. I'm grossed out already. Do you ever touch your willy? Look at him! I am shocked. How does that feel? Did that not sound like somebody who's a groomer? Let's just stop the video before. Does that not sound like somebody who is a predator? I'm sorry. Let's just call it what it is. Let's just call it what it is. I'm not saying she is. I'm saying if anybody was to come up to say to a child, do you touch your penis? Do you touch your willy? How does that feel? If somebody was to come up to my son and say that, I, I, I if somebody was to come up to say that to your friend's child, would you not be like, hey, whoa, that is not appropriate to ever ask. I don't care in what setting, okay? In what setting is that okay? It's hard to do that even when it comes to kids who are actual victims. You know how hard it is for a psychologist to come and psychiatrist to come in and say, did, did Billy do this? And even then, it's hard to take a kid through that. It's so traumatizing. This is sick. Ah. Oh. What response was that? He's like, what? Does it feel good? <laughs> He's six, maybe five. And you know what the argument was for this, by the way? The, one of the arguments I was reading about was um, that kids are more sexually in tune earlier than we think. At five? You think that telling, asking a kid if they feel good when they touch themselves at five is a good thing? You think they understand it completely? Like they're just, man, their intelligence is just out of this world. They can't even spell their name, but of course they can tell us about the sexual nature of life. Y'all y'all understand how insane this stuff sounds? Do you do that when your evening's late? No, you freak! No, I don't do that when I'm eating. Touch my penis? Play with my willy? He's like, get me out of this what in the world? Cause his parents ain't talking to him about that. Look at, look at, look at how wild she looks. Or in the classroom? Y'all think, t I was gonna say, do you think teachers will let that happen? But these days, <laughs> but, um, what? The boy said no. Why do you put pressure in him? The boy's like, dude, listen, I'm not doing that. Kind. Chill. Chill. You're making the little boy, he's a little kid. He's like, I don't like talking about that. That's disgusting. Like, even, you can even tell how uh, disturbed the boy is. Like, mm, uh, like, what are you talking about? In my classroom when I'm with my friends chilling? I'm trying to learn my ABCs. I'm over here playing with a toy truck. And you're asking me, D does it feel good when I touch myself? What? When can you play with your... Now, obviously, this may be um, language barrier. She may be saying another word instead of dick. But I don't know. But when can you play with your penis? When? What do you mean, when can it... When can he play with his penis? Like kids are like, oh, this is the perfect time to play with myself. They aren't thinking this way. You, hell, let me calm down. Not only boys have an orgasm. Why would you have to teach them that? Can't they find that, that out when they get older, okay? As much as I would say, like, say that kids are going to be safe, I, I know that things happen. Now, a parent can't be on top of a kid. 
other kids are going to talk about this stuff. I understand that. I say we can protect them fully, but to have grown adults talk to kids like not only boys, because you know this ain't the only two kids they talk to. These are the kids that they're putting on here, the kids that probably didn't freak out. But they don't have ejaculation then because we don't have sperm? Are we serious with that? Got them real close. Can't do it. Like you, like it, my sounds ain't working. But oh my gosh, this is making me want to turn to that side. You know what I'm talking about? What did that say? But, um, obviously, you looked at your vagina before. This has got to be the most uncomfortable conversation you could ever have with a child, ever. What? Um, have you obviously looked at your vagina before, haven't you? What? What are you trying to get her to admit? Like, what do you want to know? Like, what is the purpose of this? This is supposed to be about sex education, by the way. That's what this whole thing is about. And they're trying to say that we should start teaching kids at five years old. That's insanity. I mean, do can people not look inside and just go, this might not be right. When I'm really sitting back and thinking about it, this is kind of nasty. You have your inner labaya and there are two holes there. So you're just like, mom, help. Oh, man. Hold on, guys. That is just insanity. <clears throat> Some reason my thing is not going to cooperate. It is what it is, though. One for PB and one where your baby comes out. But above those holes is also. It's kind of a button. Do you ever see that or not? She says she doesn't even see it. So you're literally explaining this girl how to do those things. Why? Like, what? Tell me, what is the purpose of that? The little girl doesn't even know what you're talking about. So what are you going to teach her? What, tell me, what would be the purpose of teaching this little girl about how to touch herself? Like, what's, what, is that going to make her life better? Is her life going to go easier? I mean, what's the point of teaching her that? The only way you would teach her that it just is to set her up for failure. Because once you teach her that, then somebody else is going to come along. And you know, and I hate to say this, but there is a interview from a trial predator who says, who are the most vulnerable people to go after? These kind of kids, man. These kind of kids who get to talk this kind of stuff like this and their parents are sexually open like this or even allowing them to be sexually open like this, these are easier targets for predators. Why? Because you're making them okay with it. Instead of these little kids being grossed out and saying that's uncomfortable, you're making them comfortable with it. So there's going to come along somebody who's going to slowly get close to it. And these people don't give a F. That's what bothers me so much. You never studied it like that before? Of course not! I'm nine! The little button you call the clitoris. Clitoris. When you find a touch... You're teaching this little girl about self-pleasure. To be honest with you guys, and let's just take this to adulthood. Let's take little kids out of it. Thank God, please, let's take the kids out of it. When you're an adult and you masturbate a lot and you do these kind of stuff, this stuff doesn't lead to a happier life. Go look at the stats. Go look them up. And try to find them non-biased. People who masturbate a ton, they lose that sex drive and they get more depressed. 
they don't live happier lives because they're constantly giving themselves pres- pleasure. The brain, the body doesn't work like that. That that just it just becomes a drug after a while, right? It should only be used in the contents of you being with your spouse or partner. Masturbation is not something you should be like. Yes, I gotta do it because it doesn't lead to a better life. More men today. Let's take the women out of it for a little bit. More men today are masturbating more than ever. Men are looking at porn much more than ever. They are sexually freer than ever, you could say. And more men are lonely. Men take their lives at an extremely high rate. And that number is climbing. Men are more lonely. Men are more likely to have sexless lives. More, more men are single. More men are dealing with depression, anxiety. And they, are more, they, they have more porn than ever, right? They can masturbate as much as possible. And does it look like it's helping society? No. So there's no point of teaching children this because it's not a beneficial tool. Instead of teaching them about better skills and, you know, dealing with mental health or dealing with life, exercising and stuff like that, you want to teach them about masturbation? We just read a whole piece on that. Same thing, teaching nine-year-olds what to do, how to touch themselves. What are we doing? And listen, I know it's so... Never mind. I'll talk about that in a second. When you touch it, it, it it's very, actually very nice when you're touching that button. You could, you're really going to, oh my God, you sick freak. You really want this girl to go home and start messing with herself? Like, if my, if your daughter came home and said, hey, look, oh, hey, I was with this person and she's telling me to start touching myself, so that's what I'm going to do. You don't think that, that a, a regular parent would want to go snap that person's neck? I'm not condoning violence, but it's just what you've taught this kid can be so damaging. Now you're introducing them to the sex world that's meant for adults. Now you push them into this world, this sexual perversion of masturbation. And that's going to probably lead them to porn. And then it's going to lead them to having sex, but not even people they love. More than likely, you didn't even teach sex about love. You're teaching them to do self-pleasure. So they might start having, this girl could start having sex. I don't know if I can wish that up on her. Kids like this getting taught like this, can have sex, start having sex with men. Men! I'm talking about at a young age, having sex with men for purely self-pleasure. And they take all the love out of it. They take all the intimacy, all the getting to know somebody, all the spending your life, spending the rest of your life with somebody. Instead of doing that, you're teaching them to go home and masturbate. You're not even teaching them about the importance of sex and the sanctity of sex and the beautiful nature of sex. You're teaching them about the dark side. You're teaching them about doing it outside of marriage. You're talking about masturbating. You're talking about getting that wonderful feeling, that self-pleasure to a child. Do you think that's going to help them in life? Because we already know how it ends. We have more kids today. We have more men and more women masturbating more than ever. And it does not lead to a better life. It doesn't. So what are you teaching them this for? You're just setting them up for failure, especially at a young age. She is more likely... These kids are more like kids like them or more likely to become sex addicts because you're teaching them so young about sexual pleasure. It's going to start messing with their brain before they can even hit teenage years. And so by the time they're a teenager, they're going to be thinking about sex and pleasure at a much higher rate than a normal kid may. And normal kids struggle even then. This is a disgusting interview and you have screwed these kids up. Possibly. I hope they got therapy. After this therapy session, they have to get therapy for therapy. Stop world control, the voice of sickos. That's what I just read. Not the voice of freedom, voice of sickos. I really just gave my whole spill on it, but it's just that, listen, I'm just saying, guys, I'll get my personal experience. I try to be pretty open and I try not to be crazy. Y'all know how I grew up. Okay, I grew up with sex very involved in my life. Um, I lost my virginity at eight years old. I knew about sex, masturbation at a very young age. I was looking at porn mags at probably eight or nine. Um, and I went into that world. Uh, I learned about all that stuff. By the time I was 13, I was a full-blown porn addict, um, full-blown sex addict. Um, did some awful things that I... Obviously, I can't tell y'all everything, but I can tell you at a young age as a kid, I was involved in some very, very bad things um, and I didn't know what I was doing. And I felt like an absolute monster by the time I grew up and realized what I was doing. But by that time, I, I, I didn't know what I was doing was wrong. I had done stuff with 
um, other people that I, I, I just didn't know what I was doing because nobody was teaching me the way I was taught about sex at a very young age. I was doing sexual acts at a very young age. And before I was even in the third grade, and I would, and it was just, it, I, I didn't realize how much it was going to affect my life, obviously, because I was a kid. And I'm telling you guys that masturbating at a young age and getting older and still masturbating, especially if you start getting into your adult life, it does not make you feel better. You feel more like a loser. You feel like, what's going on? Because let's just be honest with ourselves. The aftermath of sex, especially when it's not with a partner, is really disgusting. Let's be honest. The aftermath of sex, and especially the way it's taught to us in pornography, it is, it's, it's not a beautiful scene. It's not. When there is all this fluid and all this everywhere and that you have to clean up, I've had these relations so many times in my life. I've had done all these things so many times in life. And I could tell you, outside of being married, every time it ended, I felt the worst I've ever felt in my life. It, it, it is the most depressing thing ever to realize you can't stop yourself every night you think about it. Every time you get with the girl, you think about it. Every time you're doing anything, you think about it. Like you, you're sitting at work. You're, you're sitting at home. You try to watch a movie with the girl. You try to do all this stuff. It always ends in the same fashion. And you just start asking yourself, like, what the heck am I doing? Like, you know what? Like, there's some stuff that can be commended. Like, when you're growing up, like, when you're becoming more of a man, the stuff that used to be commended, like, not necessarily starting your own business, but getting a job working your way up in a company, becoming more fluent, becoming a better reader, becoming better at being a father, being a husband. Now what's looked upon as becoming, having more sex with women and getting rich. And I'm not against making money or anything like that, but th those things are fulfilling within themselves. Sex is beautiful within a marriage. Making money is great when you're making it for a family. But if the whole purpose of making money is just to have sex with women, it really becomes dead after a while. And if the whole point of you having sex is just to eventually climax, it becomes useless after a while. It doesn't even come about love. It becomes an addiction. It's like having to go take a hit of something just to function. And y'all know that they call that thing that post-nut post -nut clarity? It's a true thing because your brain is so addicted to that feeling and that pleasure that when it when you finally get that hit, that when you finally get that hit, and you finally get to breathe out, it's like your brain comes back to normal, doesn't it? And then that's when you start going, what the heck am I doing? That's why back in the day when I was growing up, I was always taught before you go to a club, before you go to a girl, you have to masturbate first and get that out of you so you don't manipulate yourself into getting with any girl you see because you're so horny. That's dangerous. I know it sounds so funny and it's so goofy, but I don't understand that people don't understand how bad sex addiction and porn addiction can really ruin somebody's lives. Y'all see the things that they're doing to children now. Is it funny now? Is it funny I, I had a mentor of mine who's, I don't get too many, too many details, but let's just say something happened to one of their family members in their life. And because of this terrible thing, this person ended up taking their lives. Was it funny then? Was that guy cool then? Was the person who did this to this person because they were a sex addict and a porn addict, they did this to somebody which ended up have, causing them to take their life? Was it, was it funny then when these little girls ended up taking their lives because some of the things that men did to them. Is it funny then? Is it funny with some of these little boys who get into this uh, place and another grown man takes advantage of them and they take their lives? Is it serious then when these, these teachers, these women teachers take advantage of 15-year-old boys and we're all like, man, I wish it could have been me. And then that little boy turns out to be that little boy ends up going into a, an actual spiral of drugs and addiction. And he ends up taking advantage of some other little girl. Is it funny then? No, it's never funny because too many people make a joke about this. And it's kind of, it's just kind of annoying at this point because people can see evil right in front of their face. And then they want to get up in arms and be like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe this is happening to the children. Well, if you would just shut your mouth for a second and actually listen to what we're trying to tell you instead of laughing at every chance you get when somebody talks to you about sex and masturbation maybe you'd understand but you're so childlike what has happened to society and i'm to blame for this as well i've done it we 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 are growing up because technology and everything has got us so far we can live such an easy life we don't end up growing up until we're in our 30s that's why you see these predators coming out more and more and more because this it's you're 35 by the time you decide to start getting your life together by the time you stop, you decide to stop drinking, right? 
By the time you decide to stop looking at porn every day, by the time you decide, hey, maybe I, I can't act a fool every day. Maybe I need to get my finances in order. It takes us all the way to that point by the time we actually grow up. And that's why you got so many people being like, oh, I'm this and I'm that. And I identify as seven years old because nobody wants to grow up. It's too easy, baby. Back then, you had no choice but to grow up. But we'll make life easy. You know how it goes. Life will be easy now. And then us people who are living this easy life, eventually we're going to make the life hard again. We're going to do stuff to make life hard again. And then men will grow up at a faster rate and things will go back to what they used to be. Not saying it was perfect, but this ain't it. All I'm saying, guys, open your open your eyes, open your ears, shut your mouth, sit back, listen to people who are talking about this kind of stuff, because this video is exactly what it was. When we started saying that when you start opening these floodgates to sexual perversion, that eventually it's going to get to the kids. Here we are. We're talking to the little kids about masturbating now at five years old, asking a little kid if he touches his weenie. You understand that? Do you get it? If you don't. You really need to take a look inside. Evil's right around the corner for every one of us. It only takes one small push. If, if you don't learn to fight back, it's going to get worse. Thank you for all the people who watched this video. Thank all you guys. I love you guys. I hope you have a great day. Peace.